Now let's go to our panel. In London, we have Juma al Gamati. He's the head of the Tahrir Party and a member of the UN-backed Libyan political dialogue group. In Tripoli, Mustafa Fetouri. He's a Libyan academic and journalist. And in San Antonio, Texas, we have Libyan specialist Mansour al Kekhia. Mansour, let me begin with you. We don't know a lot about Haftar's illness. We've heard that he had a stroke. We heard that he had lung cancer that spread to the brain. One source said he suffered irreversible brain damage. We know he's not dead. That was the initial rumor. He's not dead. He's 75 years old. Can we, at this point in time, given all the available information, Mansour, say that this guy is definitely out of the running in terms of leadership for the foreseeable future? Um, I don't think out of the running is... Well, he, as personally, he's out of the running, but his influence is still there. I have no doubt that, that there are some people within the National Libyan Army who support him and who support his vision. Now, how effective they will be is a different, a different story. But will Hefter still have influence until he's totally buried, you know? And even when he's buried, he will still have some influence, indirect influence in the, in the affair. There's no doubt about that. Okay. You know, uh, okay, interesting. Jumal Gamati. Do you believe that this is a game changer, given that Haftar, the man who was seen as the strong man, who might even be the next Gaddafi, according to some, might be completely out of the equation because he's severely ill and he, he might even die soon? Well, I, I believe, irrespective of um, whether, you know, he's dead or he's going to die soon, that is, that is not our... That's not my concern. Uh, we we uh, talk about Haftar in his capacity as the head of the uh, self-proclaimed Libyan National Army, as a man who has been very uh, influential in the Libyan scene over the last four years, as a man who has been very, very divisive, uh, with some people are uh, fanatically supporting him, and some people are you know, fanatically opposing him because they fear that he might return us to military rule, to dictator and, and to totalitarianism. So in that sense, I think uh, he's going, his, his influence, his control is, is waning very quickly, is, is reducing very quickly. He, he might be already incapacitated. He will not be, his health will not allow him to resume his normal functions and his normal duties. We know mm -hmm. that there is, there is a lot of competition now right. about who's going to be replacing him. And we, we hear about news of maybe promoting uh, other officers. So in that sense, and because of his control and influence and hegemony over the parliament in Tobruk, in, in that sense, maybe the parliament now will be, uh, his control will be loosened a lot so that the parliament can be freer okay. to make uh, serious dialogue with the other side and the serious compromises from all sides to get us out of this mess. Mustafa, let me ask you then, what happens to the LNA? There's a bunch of names that have been floating around. I personally don't know any of them. There's a Speaker of the House of Representatives in Tabruk, Akhil Saleh. There's Aoun Al Furjani, Abdul Salam Al Hassi, Abdul Razak Al Nathuri. A whole bunch of names that have been thrown forward as possible successors. What is the LNA going to do now? Well, it's a, it's a pretty difficult question. I mean, given the general environment of uh, systematic chaos, if you like, in the country, in Eastern Libya or Western Libya, I think the question of succession uh, after Mr. Haftar, uh, whether he is alive or, or dead, I mean, it's, it's a time that we talk about a, a person who is decapacitated beyond the ability of uh, resuming his duties. So it's a quite difficult question. I am not sure if uh, Mr. Hafter has any mechanisms in place, uh, neither the parliament as well in this regard, whether they have any mechanisms actually in place to, uh, to uh, select uh, 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 a figurehead, if right. you like, for the LNA after uh, Mr. Haftar, and because what, what really makes it difficult at this stage is the fact that two, two things. One is the chaotic situation and the, the barriers of the parliament itself, plus the fact that the LNA, the, the whole idea of the LNA was created by Haftar himself in, right. 19, uh, in uh, 2014, when nobody actually took him seriously. But it's a very difficult question to answer now. I, I don't see really uh, a very good uh, figure that could replace him right away, uh, who could be uh, a kind of uh, a, a generally accepted 
by the different forces in Eastern yes, he and Western Yes, undoubtedly had well. a certain yeah he had undoubtedly had a certain strength and charisma. Even if you opposed him, he's not well at the moment. Mansoor, let me ask you then. One of the names that I had mentioned, yeah. uh, Abdul Razak or Abdul Razak Nathuri, the military chief of staff. Abdul Razak Nathuri. Yes, Abdul Razak. Yes. So Mansoor, that man, he had an assassination yeah. attempt just recently. How much of an indication is that? that the East especially will plunge into further turmoil now as this vacuum looms over the East with Hefter incapacitated? Well, the terrorism and the assassination attempts at individuals in the East has been going on for, for, for quite a number of years. And so that's not, that's not too, too different and too strange. And there are interests, of course, who want to, to, to plunge the East in, in, in turmoil. But the truth is, irrespective of whether it's a fiction or fabrication of Hefter's mind or not, the East is, has a unified command. It does not have militias. It is, has been relative peace in, for the last uh, two or three years. So Hefter, Hefter has been a, 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 a positive force, in, at least in eastern, eastern Libya. We, we don't, eastern Libya does not, does not have militias. We don't have kidnapping every day. We don't have any of this. And so are there people vying for Hefter's militias? Of course they are. Everyone vies for power. Is the parliament strong and do that has aspirations? Yes, it does. I'm not saying no. But I think there is at least is it, the, 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 the silver lining in all of this is that you have at least one structure in the East that you have to deal with. And I think the Naduri might be a, a viable candidate in all of this, but it will, it will be it will be undoubtedly within the, the military military structure. It will not be out, outside it. Naduri has as much right to lead it as any other person within mm -hmm. the military structure that exists today. Right, Juma, let me pick up on one of the points that was made by Mansour that Haftar has been a positive influence on the East. I think you disagree. Tell me why. First of all, I can assure you that Haftar does not a unified, homogeneous, professional army. It is a collection of different things. Yes, there are professional soldiers and, 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 and officers, but there are also tribal militias as part of the LNA and the Haftar uh, camp. There are also Salafi uh, militias as part of the uh, Haftar Camp. Only yesterday in Benghazi, in Venetia Street, they have been fighting between two groups. One group was supposed to be representing the police, and another group representing some sort of an army brigade. And today, Huwaidi, who is in charge of security in Benghazi, has resigned. It shows you how fragile and that this, this collection of not homogeneous at all. Uh, so-called uh, LNA, which Haftar has created around himself, his personality and his cult. Once Haftar is out of the scene, this might very well fragment very quickly. That is not good for the east of Libya. It's not for good for Libya at all. That is why the uh, HOR, the parliament, and Agila Saleh and the political, the current political leadership must take the initiative and uh, ensure that there is stability within the LNA right. and also push forward strongly with the unification of the Libyan army as a whole, the, the negotiations that were going on in, in Egypt between officers in the West in Tripoli and officers from the East, led by Naduri and led by Abdurrahman Tawil from Tripoli. That negotiation should be resumed okay. as soon as possible, preferably within Libya, unite the army, because I can assure you the, uh, the Haftar camp is not a professional army as has been presented. Okay, so Mansour, they're not a professional army. They don't yes. have homogenous control. And this law and order uh, that you're talking hear, about in the, in the East, Mansour, doesn't exist. Well, I, I think I disagree with the Jum'ah. I know Jum'ah, I, I know his thinking, and, and I, I know him for, for, for a long time. But I totally disagree with him. Jum'ah Jum follows him fundamentally, goes with the Islamic, Islamic Brotherhood, and he's, he supports them, and he's been in the pre previous uh, uh, parliament before this one. He was a member of, of that. And, and, he's, and, he, and I, think, I think he has all the rights to Wrong. his thinking. Wrong. But, I just, but I, what the, one Wrong. of the points he's, he's, he, he added, was the fact was the fact that that these these so-called he calls militias that within Hefter's within Hefter's structure, well that's important. Okay, that's fine. 
But but when 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 you look at the West, they're, they're, they're under no structure. I, they, 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 nothing's going to be easy. These, Libya itself is under difficult circumstances. The 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 previous governments have have made Libya under previous circumstances, taking over from Gaddafi. That Libya is going to is going to find difficulty at least between uh, even unification between the East and the West is going to be very very difficult. I'm, I understand all this, but what do they want? I mean, you want everything to be okay. wonderful so and let's, okay. and uh, right. uh, hunky dory. Right. Let's ask. Let's Gaddafi? ask Juma. Juma. Let me just correct Mansour yeah. first of all about factual things. I was I was never a member of the GNC. I never stood for any elections in Libya at all. So he's totally uh, incorrect there, and he should be following things much closely than that. I know he's in Texas, is a bit far from Libya. And secondly, I have nothing to do with the Muslim Brotherhood whatsoever. Uh, so that, just to put the record straight for the viewers, not not for Mansour. Maybe he's not really interested to know the reality of things. Uh, but I, I remind him uh, that there are militias in Benghazi. The Salafis are uh, militias. Uh, tribal militias, uh, what we call in Arabic, kataib awliya dam those who are going to take revenge for their sons because they were killed by the other side. They have formed militias in Benghazi. Right. They have ransacked many houses and many districts. These are realities which the Libyans inside Libya and in Benghazi and in the East know very well. Mansour from Texas cannot change that reality. Okay. okay. Now, I want to move on to talk about elections. But before we talk about uh, elections, Mustafa, I want you to listen to what Hassan Salami had to say, the yeah. UN Special Representative to, to Libya. Have a little listen first. Elections are extremely vital in a country that needs to untangle political deadlock. It's specifically very important in Libya because most of the current institutions need more legitimacy. Legitimacy is not achieved through a decision, and it doesn't come through an international representative. Legitimacy comes by popular representation and the people's will by means of election. Mustafa, it seems as if the UN is extra keen on elections. They want it as soon as next month. They're pushing for it. Is that a good idea? Well, they, they have to be extra keen, sir, because for the simple reason, they have no other alternative. They have, the UN have failed Libya from the start. And uh, uh, whether this is a good idea at this time, uh, I'm not sure really it is a good idea. And in terms of success, if we have a scale from 1 to 10, whether the elections will be successful or not, at this time, I would only give it a 3, plus okay. probably 3.5 on the scale to 10. And there are many reasons for that. I mean, the, the, the first and most important reason is that the country, the whole country is not controlled by one uh, single authority, if you like, whereby you could discuss with them and they can take control of the election uh, day right. itself, the security okay. issues. Okay. So let me, let me so ask Mansour. It's, it's okay. quite complicated. Right. It, is, it is complicated. Mansour, given that Haftar is out of the picture politically yeah. in a tangible sense for the moment, will those elections even happen? Or should they happen with him out of the picture, given that he was one of the two main figures in the country in the build-up to a possible election? Well, the, the, tr the truth is, if the elections do happen, they will fail miserably very, very soon after that. I don't see how can you build elections or have elections based on a structure that is not there. I mean, the right, right now, when you think about it, you have, you, have, you have a divided country on the one hand and subdivided countries in, 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 in itself. And so I, I, I think, yes, you can, have, you can never have elections, but how, how are you going to guarantee security? For, for, for voting. How are you going to, what structure, there is no unified structure to do that. Will the UN come in? Will the United States or France or Italy? I, I, I don't know. I don't know how, how it's, going to, it's going to work out, you know. The, the, the truth is, at this stage, I think, I think we are, Libya as a whole, has, 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 is facing difficulty because of Hitler is incapacitated. Had he been there, you might be able to have elections. But since he's not there, you won't be able to have any elections. Okay, so Jamal, let, let's ask Jamal. Jamal, Jamal. 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 Hitler's out of the equation. That's why you shouldn't be having elections. Do you agree with that? No, no. 
No, no, not at all. Uh, elections are a right for the Libyan people, but the, the question is which elections and based on what? There are two options being, put, being considered at the moment. Either we go for elections without a permanent constitution, without a referendum first on the draft constitution which is ready, which means that we will uh, go to a fourth transitional period, which is more of the same, really. That's not going to help. Uh, whereas the other option, which a lot of people are asking for, and if you are following Libyan uh, public opinion and on the social media, a lot of people are saying we want constitution first. So that means let's go to a referendum on the draft constitution. If it is approved by two-thirds majority, then we have the new political order, the new political frame, the new cons constitutional basis for which will stipulate what kind of elections we will have, presidential, parliamentarian, what are the conditions. And, and that might come maybe next year. I think it's too ambitious to have it this year. I think the security conditions have to be right. The economic conditions have to be right. And we need to achieve a much better and higher level of national reconciliation. That's why Ghassan Salam has been advised that, by all means, uh, concentrate on national reconciliation between the East and the West and the South. And now, as a divisive figure of Haftar is out of the scene, re national reconciliation will be much easier between those tribal leaders in the East and, and the West and the South. And then after that, let's have a constitutional track where we have a new permanent constitution. And that will show us and stipulate uh, what elections we will have. And elections will follow after the constitution. That is really the logical sequence, which I hope will be adopted and followed and which I hope Ghassan Salama will also listen to and follow rather than right. listen to regional and, and some Arab influences who want a quick election because they want some sort of a candidate to be there as a president to serve their own interest. What's important is not the interest of Egypt or the Emiratis or the Qataris or anybody else. What's important is the interest of Libya and Libyans only. And the utmost interest is for Libya and that's what Ghassan Salama and all of us should be working for. Okay. Well, we'll be watching this closely. Uh, Hefter has severe health problems. It's complicated and already complicated situation in Libya. Uh, one thing I was going to ask you, gentlemen, but we're out of time, is, you know, the UAE, Egypt, uh, France and Russia have backed Hefter in the past. I wonder if they're considering, you know, backing a new horse or they're recalibrating their approach. So that's something to look out for as well. But for the moment, I have to thank you all, Juma al gabati Mustafa Fetouri and Mansour al kahia I thank you all for joining us here on the Newsmakers.